Here's a look at that opportunistic defense by Oregon State just a moment ago. Well, yeah, as he forces him into the corner, uh, they got the double team. Five isn't ready for the ball. Now, he, as the play continued, uh, one thing to look for on a fast break is the width of the, of the, of the, the people that are coming down court. As long as you keep the ball wide, uh, you provide some easy baskets for yourself. So anytime you see a fast break, look for the, for the guards going wide. Darrell Brandon at the line, 886 from the free throw line this year. Oregon as a team shoots 738 from the strike. Ninth point of the game, eighth point of the game, excuse me, for Brandon. He's averaging 25.4 with almost three steals and five and a half assists. Doesn't it kind of remind you of Bo Jackson? Every time he touches yeah. the ball, it's like it's something exciting is going to happen. He is a very, very fine player. A lot of fun to watch. 38-25, Ducks leading the Beavers. Oregon's gone back to a zone. Uh, they don't want any, any interior play. They're trying to make force Oregon State to shoot from the outside. Snug up a little on Cavill. He's been outstanding from the perimeter. Inside to Anderson. Cavill's shot is blocked. Scramble in the corner. It's out of bounds to Oregon. Scrappy defense. I yes. think two guys blocked that shot. That's okay. how aggressive they're playing. They're sending one, two, three. They'll, they'll send the whole bench after a player. You see two guys going after it, and then there's there. Lighten at the at the other end to recover the, the block shot. 38-25, Oregon with 4:28 to play in the first half. Got it, Keith. Henry Grigmar is in the game for Oregon State, and we have a Beaver foul on Brantley. First of the game for Brantley. Well, Brantley, he's capable of going inside or outside. He gets he gets Brandon Brantley up in the air, and any time you get a player up in the air, it's yours to do what you want. Usually, you control to draw the foul. You can take a drop step and go in for the lane. Uh, as a defensive player, you can't afford to lose your leave your feet. Brandon had a career high 33 points last night. He scored 20 or more points in all but the first game of the year. So Oregon will substitute. Leiden goes out. Jordan comes back on for the Ducks. And Leiden did an outstanding job. Uh, no turnovers. Played great defense. And that's the kind of substitution you want from a freshman. Come in poised. Biggest lead of the game. 39-25. 14 points. 4-10 to go here in the first half in Portland. Hook shot goes down. Nice job by Henry Ringmar. On that play, you're seeing every time Oregon State gets the ball, there's a double team. They, the, 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 the postman got the ball and released it and passed it immediately. Oh, got a little physical play out there. Uh, a little shoving between Fife and Ringmar. Ringmar, a 6'9 sophomore from Uppsala, Sweden. Welcome to the Civil War. Yes. Lucas blocked at the goal by Anderson. They kind of goaltending. Foul to Anderson. And Ringmar will go to the bench. And Lucas will be at the line. Look at that outstanding pass. Lucas goes up strong. Gets the foul. Well, I guess they would not call it goaltending. I thought that's other vindication, but apparently not. And Lucas' first shot fails. Anderson decision well I think I think the referees sense uh, the game getting out of hand players are getting becoming more physical I think they're trying to get, gain a little control right here but Jimmy's not too happy about it 340 to go in the first half 13 point balls for Oregon it's clearly been Oregon's half they're dominated throughout Bradley able to draw the foul and he'll go to the foul line with two shots. Foul is to Lucas, his second. Brantley's coming at him right there trying to break the seam. And one thing you have to do with the ball when you're playing against a zone is try to penetrate the seams that they give you. Uh, Brand Brantley did that this time. Got the foul. Brantley, a good foul shooter, 792 on the year. 
One to go for Brantley. Has a 50% career field goal percentage average. That's one of the reasons they're trying to get him more shots. Sure. He's a very consistent shooter. 13 points in the game for Brantley. 325 to go. Oregon leading at 40-28. Brandon against Brantley. Back door. And Jordan is there. Nice pass by Lucas. Lighty Jordan collects his first field goal. Excellent call by the coach there. He calls the backdoor play. Oregon State's trying to pressure the wings. They right, realized it, got the ball to the post, and ran the backdoor play to perfection. Here's Brentley. That doesn't go by Scott, and Fife controls the rebound. And Oregon quickly into the front court. Or Lucas untended. They are putting on a clinic out, clinic out here, Jimmy. That's one of the better games I've seen Oregon play in a long time. 44 to 28 ducks. Counted three points for Charles McKinney. Point shooter, 41% on the year. 225 to go in the half, 44-31 ducks. Look at that defense played by McKinney. Is Brandon short jumper? Uh -uh. Chad Scott picks it out. Well, they, ran, they ran impressed to perfection. Anytime the guy crosses court, half court, they're looking to trap right at the corners. Brantley can't get it on the reverse, and a lot of good hustle by the Ducks wins possession. It'll be Oregon's ball. I think he called a pushing foul. Oh, by, he did. Yes, indeed, he did. It will be a Beaver foul. That's going to be to Bob Cavill. That's two on Cavill. As you may be able to tell, a very unpopular decision with the Oregon State fans here. Brandon will be at the line. Brandon, three or four from the stripe today, adds another. Well, if you're Oregon State, you've got to be concerned the amount of free throws Oregon's getting. You're getting a lot of cheap fouls. You're going to have to start moving your feet more and stop reaching and, and be conscious of the, of the foul trouble you're getting and, and opportunities you're getting at the free throw line. Brandon slaps both home. Two minutes to play in the half. 15-point duck lead. Bradley coming off the high post. Sends it back outside. Alabegovic pops quickly from the top and comes up short. Lucas hustles for the rebound. Hustles is the word. They are just being out-hustled for all the loose balls right now. Oregon is playing outstanding basketball. This is the best I've seen Oregon play for some time. Anderson collects it for Oregon State. A minute 20 to go in the half. Down the court to Cavill. Nice bounce pass. One Great few, assist by Cavill. One of the few opportunities Oregon State's had at a pass break. A minute 10 remaining. First half, 13-point Oregon lead. And a big surprise to many basketball observers in this state. Lucas. Fife leading in the rebounding today with five. Look how Brandon controls the show. He's calling the play now, setting things up. He sure does. Controlling the tempo. 15 seconds on the shot clock. The freshman, Jordan, on the side against Cavill. Mixon will go for three and well off the target. Now we have 33 seconds to go in the half. Carl Anderson. Lob for Anderson, a beautiful pass. Oh! And an equally beautiful defensive move by Fife, but Anderson hangs in there and gets the goal. Yeah, he topped that one out. One thing you want to look for Anderson to do, he's very good at getting the ball. One thing, once he gets a guy in the air, he should go ahead and draw the foul. Brandon trying to penetrate. is forced to the outside. And he double dribbled. Three seconds to play in the first half. a conference between the referee and the umpire. Let's see what's going on. They originally called double dribble. 
Ron Amore is over now talking to the referee, Charlie Reigns. Let's see if they change it. And now a conference with Terry Crispin. I would guess that there is some possibility they'll change that to a double from a double dribble to a foul. That would only be the only option at this point. Let's see it again. You're looking at Oregon State, you see McKinney reaching in. I think they might be saying he knocked the ball out of his hand. So that's the indication that McKinney knocked the ball out of Brantley's hand and was not a double dribble. So possession to Oregon. Lucas, tough shot. Cannot get it down, and that ends the first half of play at Memorial Coliseum. And Oregon, a two-point underdog, who played last night, leading by a large margin, 46 to 35. We'll be back right after this. Selling any Henry's men? Uh-huh. I saw that. Heard they're selling Henry's down at Oregon City. Yep. I saw that. I'll bet a hundred years from now they'll be selling Henry Weinhardt's beer as far away as Walla Walla. Long ways away. A hundred years from now. Only little girls will ride horses. Men will walk on the moon. And Henry Weinhardt's beer will be selling in New York City. Well, Oregon State certainly is going to have to improve their shooting. 58% by the Ducks to 47%. Oregon State, and actually 47% is not that bad, but Oregon has just knocked it down from everywhere on the floor. They've been out-rebounded to have the Beavers. 17 to 13 turnovers are pretty even, but that 10 turnovers in one half for Oregon State is certainly unusual. Well, I think the last game against uh, Michigan, they only had 10 for the whole game. We are back to the Coliseum in Portland, and this group of Oregon State Beavers has a lot of work to do in the second half to recover. They trail it 46 to 35. They were down by as many as 16 points to the Oregon Ducks in the first half, and Oregon has got to be playing with a great deal of confidence. Winning last night, they were lethargic most of the game against Western Michigan, but did come back to post a 73-64 victory in Eugene. Now, they've started out today with a marvelous game. Well, that's the always a good sign when you can beat a team that, uh, that, like they did last night, they were down and they know they can win and, and that's a good confidence booster when they can come back and do it. Bob Cavill and Henrik Ringmar are starting this second half for Oregon State. Cavill shot it very, very well in that first half and Teo Alabegovich has disappointed. He was 0 for 5, or 1 of 5, excuse me, from the field. Or Jimmy's sitting down, give him a little time to think about what he's doing, watch the flow of the game, see some of the opportunities he might have uh, when he comes in later. Brandon deflects the pass, but the Beavers keep it alive. Shot clock down to 17. Lucas, that tough rebounder. Oh, fine defensive play by McKinney to knock it loose. McKinney at the goal. No. And Oregon comes up with the basketball. Here is Brandon. Tough shot, knocks it down. Over two defenders, he attacks, he forces it in defense commit, he takes him all the way in, into the interior defense as far as he can go, and then when the pressure is there, he goes up for the jump shot. He was sixth in the league in scoring last year, tied for third in assists, third in three-point percentage, and second in steals. Elected by Nixon, and we have a travel violation against Oregon. Not taking care of the ball, they got fortunate break there, Mixon slipped slightly on the floor. Well, possession goes to Oregon State. Beavers rebounded on the offensive glass very well. Six of their 13 rebounds in that first half were offensive. Foul on the drive. They had a few offensive rebounds uh, early in this in the second half, and they weren't able to co convert them. Uh, even though you get the second, third opportunity, you've got to take advantage of it and convert those easy shots. You're looking here at, at, at Brantley going baseline. Uh, that's a cardinal sin right there, allowing a player to go baseline. You've got to use that baseline as your ally. 
knocked it down. Nice move down low by Brantley, who took the entry pass from Ringmar. And Brantley has 15 points in the game, and it's 48-37. This is as close as the Beavers have been in a while. Stripped. Nixon can't hold on to it. Here's Brantley with Cavill on the wing. And filling the lane is Anderson. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Oregon's only weakness is when the ball goes out of Brandon's hands. Uh, the other players, unfortunately, due to a lot of... Uh, a lot of, when you put some exert some pressure on them, they will commit to turnover. So you have to look at uh, the Oregon players being able to maintain this lead by controlling the ball. Brandon Lucas. Here is Bob Pike. Shot it very well in the first half, five of five. That's the first miss of the game for Pike. Oregon's come out a little flat. Intensity on Oregon State's part is a little bit higher right in the second half. We'll see if they run it bad enough. Score on the scoreboard is not correct, I don't believe. 48-36, it should be. 48 to 41. Here's five. Got it. A fact of fast break. Brandon constantly attacking. He comes in, he makes people commit to him. Hits easy. Open shot, open man there. Five. That's even though it's seven feet, runs the court well. Very active. 50 to 39. Ducks on top. Oregon continues to stay in the zone. They've got five clogging up the middle. Stolen. Brandon has to loft it high and is fouled by Ringmar. That will be his first, Henrik Ringmar. Boy, it's exciting to watch Terrell on the open court. You see how he sees the court? He's got the ball in the middle. He's got about two choices, three choices. He's going to hit Lucas, Fife on the left. Picks the easy choice for the dunk. And Brandon will be at the free throw line. Brandon played 38 minutes last night. He averages just under 40 minutes a game, and that's all the time there is in the game. Really don't have a replacement for him. I, I think towards the end of the season, you might see a little fatigue factor setting in. And Right, I think uh, right now they don't have a, a replacement for him, so they're forced to play him that, uh, that large amount of minutes. He controls the ball for them and uh, takes the bulk, the bulk of the shots for him. 15 points in the game for Brandon. From Grant High School. I know another guard that played for Grant High School. Well, what was his name? <laughs> Bradford. Bradford. They've got a rich tradition over there at Grant for guards. 16.55 remaining in this one. Beavers trailing it 52 to 39, and Nixon strikes it. That's a 13th turnover for Oregon State. Oregon State averages 14.8. So they are well off their game today. Nixon's very really active, though. He's, he's sneaking in. He, I think he's a designated double teamer. Anytime he, anybody gets the ball, he's allowed to come over there and double team him. Nice pass by Nixon, but no. Mixon now with four steals in the game. You look at Oregon squad, most of them are under 6'7", but their ball handling skills just aren't there. They're having a lot of turnovers. I, I really can't pinpoint why they're turning the ball over, but you get the ball out of Brandon's hand, hands, and uh, inevitably there's a turnover. Mario Jackson is back in the game. He's a starting forward for the Beavers, but he only played six minutes in that first half. Excellent athlete. Perhaps the best on the floor for the Beavers. Jackson in the paint. Jordan controls the rebound. Tipped it to the corner where he could chase it down. 52-39, Oregon. Omar well, recognizes in the zone the, the seams and the gaps. He's trying to take advantage of that by penetrating. Uh, he missed a shot, but he's going to have a lot of more opportunities at doing that. Alabegovic against Fife. It goes inside and Fife. 14 in the game. Great timing play. 54 to 39, back to a 15 point lead. And freshman Clyde Jordan came up with that assist. One of the reasons why they're going with him as a starter now. McKinney has the shot, cannot get it down, and Lucas rebounds for Oregon. Lucas with four boards. Fife leads him with five. Jordan also has four rebounds for Oregon. No second shots anymore for Oregon State. No. Rebound, Chad Scott. Now the Beavers off and running. Ducks get back well. Chad Scott to the outside. 
15 minutes to play in the game, and it's been all Oregon this afternoon. They're packing it back in tight. They've got the, the, the zone defense working. Uh, they got Mixon roaming the baseline. Alabagovic in the paint cannot get it down. It's about a terrible shooting day. Uh, they nail Jackson with a foul. A little frustration foul. Uh, obviously, Oregon State's disappointed they can't make the easy shots. They had a second shot, another, another easy one at the basket. Missed it. They're looking. No problem. Get the ball inside. That hasn't been the problem. It's putting it down for Oregon State. Chad Scott comes in. Mario gets a little frustrated. Well, or, foul. Oregon State, as you say, has had no problem getting the ball inside, but with that quick double team, you'd think they'd want to kick it out to the uh, outside again, and because somebody's got to be open. <laughs> Stolen by Alabegovic. Yeah, anytime you reverse the ball and get it to the weak side, that's going to be the biggest opportunity for you for you to score against that defense. Uh, Oregon State's going to have to be aware of that, kick the ball around, and get it to the weak side. Oregon State to inbound on the side. Alabegovic, McKinney, Jackson. Brantley and Chad Scott on the floor for the Orange Express. Scott for sit down. The fifth point of the day for Scott, who shoots 56% from three-point range. That's been a pleasant surprise, uh, his outside shooting for Oregon State. Oregon tried that backdoor cut, tried to go for the lob again. I like to see a team do, do the same thing twice. Well, Oregon answers with their own three-point goal, Terrell Brandon. 19 points in the game. Anytime there's a breakdown in the offense, he's always there to recover and create something one-on-one. -on -one. Watch Mixon on, the, on uh, every rotation of the ball. Watch Mixon. He'll cover. He'll go to double team. He's just kind of a roving player right now. And it, it's confusing, Oregon State. Baseline Brantley, no. Alabegovic with a rebound is fouled on the return attempt. Boy, so Alabegovic will go to the free throw line. It gets pretty rough in there sometimes, Jimmy. That's why those little guys try to stay out of there. <laughs> Don't blame them. Foul is to Brandon, his second. Another easy shot. Uh, one of the more difficult shots in the game. Oregon State remaining active on the board. They've got to convert this little one. Brandon with the foul. Alabegovic, one of two from the free throw line in the first half. Comes up short. He's been an excellent foul shooter on the season, 791. Well, I was hoping that hitting his head would wake him up. He doesn't seem to really be all there yet. Uh, <laughs> He's one of six in the field today, his tail. I guess it didn't wake him up. Blows them both. 13-15 remaining, 57-42 Ducks. Well, sometimes offensively, if you have those nights, you've got to make it for it on the defensive end, a little hustle. I like to see him try to pick it up there. There's Alabegovic with a steal all the way to the goal. Score that, baby! Just as I was saying, Jimmy, you've got to make up for it on other ends. Uh, if you're not shooting well, you've got to play in tenacious defense. Four steals in the game for Alabegovic. Bob Fife, uh-uh, not this time. Brantley with the rebound, pushes it. Alabegovic. McKinney in the corner, and Oregon has set the defense now. Good ball moving. Mario Scott tries the baseline. Wide open, McKinney. Uh-uh. No on the top. Chad Scott, yes! Got a little momentum change here. Oregon State has picked it up a notch. They'd be a little bit more aggressive. I think T.L. making a basket, taking a steal down to the dunk has gotten the fans involved in the offense. It's predominantly an Oregon State crowd here today. Oregon will spend a timeout. 12.09 to go in this one. Beavers have closed the lead, but Oregon still on top by 11. Welcome back to the Coliseum. Oregon State coming back strong now. Watch the last two possessions by the Beavers. Well, as you watch the, the, the rebounding by Oregon State, all three men are on the board, very active. There's and that's the kind of play you need. And here's Taylor taking the steal. And all you young players out there, anytime, anytime you have an opportunity where you're not shooting the ball well, you've got to make up for it in other areas. You've got to be a better rebounder, a better defensive player. And that's what Taylor's trying to do, turn around his game right at this point. 
Oregon State's front line has got to shoot a lot better if the Beavers want to win this one. They are 5 of 14 for 36 percent. Well, Don tried to slow things down. He tried to change the momentum. It didn't work. Oregon State's still tenacious, still creating a few things here. They get the over and back call. That's a 16th turnover by the Ducks. 12 minutes to go, and the Beavers are fired up. They've been down by as many as 16 today. They're still not aware of what Mixon's doing. He's going to double team every time somebody gets the ball. He's just roaming. You got to make him pay. Mario Jackson, yes. He's splitting the seams. Perfect. Anytime you have a zone, there's all kinds of gaps. You have to be able to penetrate off the dribble and hit the little seven-footer. Foul by McKinney, his second. An aggressive defensive effort by McKinney. At this point, Brandon, one of the better ball handlers in the nation. You want to control him, contain him, make him pass if you don't want to try to steal it. Brandon is, as we told you, such a magnificent player, but he is small. He's six feet. You think he's quick enough to make it with that size in the NBA? With the, with the shooting ability he has, I, I, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. He's got a good leaping ability, as you see there. He plays much larger than he is. 21 points for Brandon. So he continues his pace of 20-plus points a game all season long, except the opener against Wisconsin. Count the goal. Well, Chad's trying to exert himself. It's good to see Teo now, and, and, and Chad also. Mario didn't really have a good first half. They're trying to take over in the second half. You see him getting the ball inside to him, head fakes, get Fife off balance, goes up into it and draws the foul. He's hit his last four shots, has Scott. From the free throw line, it's good. 59-51, this is the closest Oregon State has been since early in the first half. If you're Oregon now, you want to control the tempo, keep everybody involved. Right now, you see him sitting on the, sitting on the ball a little bit. You don't want to give Oregon State the ball back without a good shot. Brandon buries it perfect. 23 in the game for Brandon. Who needs plays when you have a player like that? <laughs> Chad Scott knocks it down. He is on fire in this half. Ten points in the half. He's not missed a shot either from the field or the strike. 10-24 remaining, 61-53 Ducks. Now that lead in serious jeopardy. Mixon. Uh -uh. Lucas a rebound. Beaver foul, I believe Jackson will wait and see. And Lucas, Lucas will go to the line. He continues to be the weapon on the offensive boards. Uh, I would like to see uh, his statistics compared to anybody in the nation right now of offensive boards, the percentage that he gets. He is remarkably durable. He averaged 37 minutes a game last year, 14 games, complete games last year. This year he's averaging better than 38 minutes a game. Ten minutes to go. We're halfway through the second half, and the duck lead is down to eight. Oregon State can't let Oregon take too much time off the clock. They have to be a little bit more aggressive, force Oregon to take a quick shot. Uh, they're allowing Oregon to set up and take their time. Plenty of time on the shot clock, 20 seconds. Jordan blocks Stolen by Brantley. Three on one. Brantley spins, and the Ducks prevent the goal at the other end it's Mixon no Heart what a series heartbreaker two easy shots in a row missed lack of concentration a nice spin shot clears the shot million dollar move a 10 cent shot they go down to the other end obvious dunk and the worst thing that could happen. A lot of exciting basketball, but no reward. Jackson against Jordan. Oregon with 16 turnovers. The Beavers with 13. There's another Beaver turnover. Brandon with a steal and a goal. Brandon has missed only one shot in this half. 
You'd like to see Oregon stay slow things down. They don't know what Oregon's in. They don't know what sort of defense they're in. Run a few plays like they are. Go to second, third options. Mario Jackson score it. Yes. And he is fouled. So now the lead is down to eight. And one shot coming for Jackson. Terrell comes with the easy steal. Mario pursuing. He goes up strong, and that's what I'm talking about. He's only 5'9", but he plays like a seven-footer the way he gets up above the rim. Here's that foul call just a moment ago. This is the kind of player Mario is. He's got to take the dribble, get little things off the, off the dribble, find seam, find gaps, go to the hole, left hand and right hand, a little short 5, 10, 15 footers. Big play by Mario Jackson, 63-56, a seven point lead. The Beavers continue to chip away ever so slowly, but nevertheless dropping that Oregon advantage. Might fatigue be a factor at this point? The Ducks did play last night. You would think 25 mark. Yeah, you definitely think that's going to be a, a, a factor, but there's so much emotion right now in this game. The fatigue, I doubt, will really play a, a, a major point. Mario Jackson back out to Bradley. Alabegovich rolls deep. Oregon continues to overplay. They're in a man to man now. Anytime the ball goes inside, you see the double. Nice pass by Alabegovich. And there you go. Brantley scores it. 17 in the game for Brantley. And that makes it 63 to 58. It's a five-point game. And Don Munson wants to talk about it. We'll be right back. We've got a dandy. Terrell Brandon has been on fire for Oregon in the second half with 13 points, but it's not been enough as the Beavers have gotten 18 shots and knocked down 10. So at the, in this half, the Beavers shooting 56%, Oregon 55%. The interesting thing is that Oregon's gotten up six more shots. Out of bounds to Oregon State. Great offensive execution, just the shot didn't go. You've got to be aware where Terrell Brandon is at all times. Oregon State wasn't, they got off the hook and missed a shot, though. Seven and one half minutes remaining. We have a five-point game. Uh-oh, we have a three-point game. Mario Jackson from the corner. Way to step up, Mario. He's really taking control of the game. He's taking the kind of shots that he can hit. Now it's 63 to 60, Ducks. Brandon, he has six assists in the game as well as that high point mark. Beavers force the turnover. The 18th, the 19th by Oregon. They force that turnover. McKinney's putting good pressure on Brandon, forcing him to pick up his dribble too soon and pass the ball. Brantley's there playing the lanes. Alabegovich pulled way outside. If you're Oregon here, you've got to make Oregon State execute. You can't give him any easy shots. Fife knocked it out of bounds. Fife, an excellent shot blocker. He has not blocked one today, but last year he set a freshman record for shots, uh, blocked shots for Oregon with 38. Oregon's playing a man-to-man. -man. Mario's got to be aware of the fact he's got Fife on him. Brandon with a steal. McKinney is on him, and Brandon scores the goal. What a half for Brandon. 15-point half. Sixty-five, sixty ducks. Jackson. Alabegovich with a rebound, and he has blocked at the goal by Fife. There's Fife making his presence known. Lucas just a bit off balance, and he walks with the ball. That same dilemma again, Jimmy. They get the ball out of Brandon's hand. They try to handle it, try to go for a fast break, and there's a traveling call. That's the 20th turnover by the Ducks. They're averaging only 13 a game. 53 remaining. Alabegovich is open for the shot. Does not take it. And Mario Jackson can't hold it. Brandon against Alabegovich. Score the goal, and he is fouled. 29 points for Brandon. 
What a difficult shot. See how he attacks the defense. He forces the defense to commit. Makes a little body contact right here to get, draw the foul and goes for the free throw. That's an uncanny ability there, a kind of an instinctive ability for a guard to create that contact. Most players are, uh, don't look forward to contact. He was looking for just a slight bump and go for the, go for the uh, two and get the free throw here. Brandon at the line. Interestingly, last summer he was a camp instructor in Seoul, Korea. Well, he's doing some instruction out here also. <laughs> he certainly is. 30 points in the game for Brandon. 5.38 to go, and the Ducks lead it by eight. Scott is short. Brantley is fouled. Well, they finally get a call underneath. Uh, they continue to get the second and third opportunities. Uh, last few times, they haven't got the call maybe that they're looking for. You see Oregon State on the boards. Brantley is there. Very active for a 6'4 guard. He gets inside and mixes it up well. And he'll be rewarded with the two free throws. Team fouls are even at five each. Will Brantley steps to the strike. Brantley with a good scoring game, 17 yeah. points. Beavers have not shot it nearly as well from the foul line tonight as they have in recent games. They came into the game with a 79% team foul shooting mark. 18 in a game for Brantley, 68-61, a seven-point bulge for the Ducks. And the Beavers using some of that patented Orange Express pressure. Right now you've got uh, McKinney trying to deny Brandon the ball. On the fast break, they want the other players to handle it. Oregon's going to take a little time off the clock. 5-10 to play. Plenty of time, Brandon. Three-point goal, yes! Mixon! Brandon held his hands up, signifying a three-point play before he even shot the ball. He knew he was going to make it instinctively. The third three-pointer of the game for Mixon. He's a U of Oregon record holder for threes. Three-point goals made and three-point goals attempted. Mario Scott, uh-uh. Look at Jordan get up for it. He's not that big, six feet five. Oregon's changing up their defense. Oregon State's got to be aware of what they're doing. Uh, that time they ran a man-to-man. -man overplay and Oregon State's got to start running the 1-4 and run some backdoor cuts on that. You might have seen the green and white card flash from the bench, number 26 it said. Well the signals for plays coming in now. Number 10 has flashed from the bench. Well Don's calling some outstanding plays. He's going to do isolation that allows Terrell to go one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, their intent here is to run a little time off the clock. If anybody gets an opportunity they'll take advantage of it though. Shot clock is down to eight. Travel. Mixon dragged his foot. You got to be proud of Oregon State's defense. Uh, you're down 10 points. Instinctively, you're going to try to reach, try to get the ball, get the foul. Uh, you've got to maintain your composure, stay back, and they did that. Didn't get any cheap fouls. You got a turnover. 21st turnover of the afternoon for Oregon. 3:56 to play. Beavers trail it by 10. What a move by Mario Jackson. He continues to find his way inside. Uh, the last shot he took prior to that was a little bit out of his range. If he stays within 10 feet, he's very effective. 71-63, Oregon. Fight. Lucas will bring it back outside. The Ducks will spend some more time. 326 to play. I like Oregon State's strategy. Um, Kenny's overplaying everything on Brandon trying to make the other four players bring it up on the press. Eventually, you're going to find a turnover here and there. Jordan, the freshman outside against Jackson. Mixon. Jordan again. Almost has a swipe by Brantley. Jordan's shot is batted away by Alabegovich. Short of the goal off Lucas. Oh, no. They say it's off Alabegovich. Tremendous hustle by Lucas. He just goes after it, irregardless of who's got the ball. He almost took it from his own player. He goes after it, ran into the camera, ran into the goal post. He will not be denied. In bottom to five at 2.55 to go. Foul Alabegovich, his third. Let's watch that action down low a moment ago. See if we can get a look at who it goes off of. You see the clock running out of time. Mixon throws up a, a, a tough shot. Mateo has an opportunity to the rebound, doesn't go after it with two hands, tries to rebound with one hand. 
Lucas comes after it. We have a timeout taken by Oregon State. <laughs> saying 55 seconds remaining, and Oregon still on top. 71 to 63. Oregon State has not yet led. If this holds up, this will be the first duck victory since 1988 when Oregon defeated Oregon State by a point at Eugene. Well, Jimmy, if you roll a, if you flip a coin ten times and nine times uh, it comes up heads, eventually you, you'd think it's going to come up tails. And uh, I think that's what, what Oregon had in mind. They've lost quite a few, uh, a big percentage of the games, and I think they feel it's, it's their turn to win. Well, might we see the Beavers set up for some three-point goals at this juncture? Well, you've got three minutes to go, a little under three minutes. Uh, I don't think it's time to, to hit the panic button yet. Uh, you've got to create some more aggressive defense on the on the defensive end and create some turnovers. Oregon can try to milk the clock. You, you, you have to create some turnovers without the fouls. Uh, if you do get a foul, at least it stops the clock. Oregon's a good free throw shooting team. You have to look at who's the worst free throw shooter maybe at this time. But I don't think it's time to go bombs away yet, Jimmy. Beavers trailed by 11 at the half. Work that lead down to three at the 720 mark. But the Ducks have come right on back. And it's 71-63 Oregon with 255 to go. Oregon's ball on the side. Lucas, a great pass to Lucas. 11 in the game for Lucas. Well, Fife just held the ball over his head. Nobody could even grab it. He finds the open man. Bob Cavill, he can shoot that three. He goes this time, but does not get it down. Here's McKinney for the rebound and the putback. No. And Lucas is there for the board. Seven in the game for Richard Lucas. He averages eight and a half. Two and a half minutes remaining. 10-point duck lead. Oregon, you're going to see them spread the offense, make Oregon State work, travel a great distance to pick up pick up the open man. They're going to have to double. Oh, all alone was five. A mistake that time. Nobody picked up five. He has 16 in the game. Outstanding and passing. Great it's now execution. a 12-point game. Oregon State's got to stay in the context of the offense, try to find the open man, get something up quickly. Chad Scott makes sure he's behind that three-point strike, but can't get it down, and Fife has the rebound for Oregon. One minute, 45 seconds remain in this one, and Oregon with an eight-point advantage, 75, excuse me, 12-point advantage, 75-63. You're going to see Oregon try to keep the middle open. They're going to try to dribble away, dribble some clock off, try to hit the seam. There's a young freshman with a turnover. Thrown into the scorer's bench. 22 turnovers for Oregon, 16 for the Beavers tonight. Time very dear now for Oregon State, a minute 27. Entry down low to Scott. Fife the rebound. Outstanding game for Bob Fife. Eight rebounds for Fife and 16 points. I hate to see him when he gets some size on him, some bulk on him, because yes. right now he's got a great hit for the ball. He knows how to get open. He runs, runs the fast break well. Well, Oregon will call the timeout this time with one minute and 10 seconds remaining, and they've built their lead back to 75-63, a comfortable 12 points with only a minute 10. But remember, that three-point goal can change things in a real big hurry. We talked about Bob Fife several times. He's just a very, very impressive player, at least to me. And look at him here, all alone. Neither player from the weak side or the strong side could get there quick enough, and Fife rolls in. Something, for the goal. Something to notice on that play. Look at the big target he gave. He's a big man. He had both hands up. He presented himself. He came to the ball. He gets it. And uh, he's rewarded with a dunk. But a lot of players hide. Uh, when people are getting double teamed, like Oregon was on the corner, you've got to present yourself uh, with a big target, able to get the ball. And uh, you, you can create a lot more opportunity when you get out there and expose yourself. Uh, uh, you see on your screen, we talked about this a couple of times. Oregon has not defeated Oregon State in a while. The last victory in 1988. The series has been dominated in the 80s, certainly by Oregon State. They've won 26 of the last 29. And in the 80s, Oregon State is 22 and 2 over the Ducks. But Oregon, it's Don Monson has finished, uh, has come up with a very, very impressive team. And most of these fellows are back, and that includes Brandon. Well, at this juncture, they look very poised. The Oregon State, you got to get them to let them cross half court and come up with a double. 
Oregon, of course, in no hurry to shoot the ball. They've got the 12-point advantage. Time on their side. 55 seconds to play. Shot clock is down to 18. Open alone is Lucas as Oregon State was overplaying, and Lucas draws the foul, too. Sharp delivery. They're passing the ball very crisp. They're finding the open man. They're not holding it very long. Um, they're finding, finding the open man underneath Lucas. He roams the baseline. As you see, look at him make present himself a big target. Goes up strong. He knows he's going to get hit, but he concentrates on the backboard, backboard and makes the basket. That's Seven one of the problems Oregon State has had is concentrating on the basket. They've had the easy opportunities like Lucas had there, and they haven't converted them. 77-63 with Lucas at the line for one. Hops it in. 14 points for Lucas to go with seven rebounds. 45 seconds remain. Got to shoot the three. Got to get it up in a hurry. Jackson. Yes. 12 points in this half for Jackson. Half minute to play. 78-66. A foul right in front of the Oregon bench by Jackson is his fifth, and he is disqualified. Pretty aggressive foul there. You don't want to see too uh, too much physical play here at the end. The game is over. Uh, you've got to play Oregon two more times. You don't want to get uh, create a, too much of a rivalry as, as we already have, and you don't want to injure anybody. Uh, Mario's a little frustrated, obviously. Uh, he was very aggressive on that foul. So that's all for Mario Jackson. Carl Anderson will check in, in the for season, Oregon State to replace Jackson. Richard Lucas will be at the line. He's not a good foul shooter. 55% on the year. He's missed. Let's see. Four. He, he is four of eight from the foul line tonight. Oregon doesn't even have a player back to the rebound. They must feel pretty confident in his uh, ability to make this one, though. Uh-oh. -uh. Anderson nope. the rebound. 26 seconds to play. Shoot it. Got it. Got to get a foul. You got to stop the clock. Foul, one of the four free throw shooters. Three threes for Cavill. Ten seconds. Nine point Beaver lead. Oh, Fife lets it dribble off his fingertips. Oregon State ball. 78 69. Oregon with just six seconds to play. Oregon State's going to try to get another three. Nope. He penetrates all the way in and still does not get it down. And there is Chad Scott to score it at the horn. Very big win for the Oregon Ducks who played brilliantly today. Final tally, Oregon 78, Oregon State 71. Dave, I heard they're selling Henry down at Oregon City. Yep. I'll bet 100 years from now, they'll be selling Henry Weinhard beer as far away as Walla Walla. A hundred years from now, only little girls will ride horses, men will walk on the moon, and Henry Weinhardt's beer will be selling in Tokyo, Japan.